welcome back everyone really appreciate you being on today's video today we're talking about heavy artillery once again the 155 millimeter archer self-propelled gun now self-propelled artillery is advancing uh very very quickly in the modern day battlefield in fact for the first time ever i can safely say i'm starting to really enjoy the wheel platforms uh, over the track platforms of self-propelled guns as much as i love tracked uh, self-propelled howitzers such as the as-90 you know the uh, panzerwitz 2000 etc etc wheeled artillery really is starting to take the forefront in the modern style battlefields that we look at today and it's interesting to see uh, when I talk about artillery, uh, many of you are commenting saying, Matt, what's your thoughts about the M777 and field artillery being held in place and not being able to do shoot and scoot and the setup time, etc., etc.? And it brings up a fascinating uh, you know, discussion about the Archer 155mm self-propelled gun, which I have a huge respect for. Personally, I would love Canada to actually uh, procure the Archer system from BAE Systems with the beautiful 155mm gun uh, system that we're already technically using for the M777 just on a wheeled platform. Now the US military though has been doing quite a lot of work with the Archer system and it's fascinating to see uh, the developments with it because I'm kind of excited in some regards seeing what the future of Archer is going to be across the NATO or Western world because I do feel that it's going to do a lot of good things in the near future and I do feel that many militaries are actually probably going to source it pretty soon. Now, the BA Systems 155mm Archer vehicle, which I have done a video on, you can go check uh, in the description box below or the link above, is a wheeled howitzer that's uh, basically been around for some time, but the US military has actually been testing it heavily uh, this year and last year, and successfully has completed the evaluation to see whether or not it wants to add the wheeled capability to its arsenal. Now, Archer is fully automated as a mobile weapon system, which provides it the capability of being less crew, faster shooting scoot capabilities and more accurate in some regard it's very highly responsive in the modern battlefield today as i mentioned wheeled artillery of self-propelled world is is really the forefront now tracked vehicles yes they're great but they're expensive they're expensive to maintain uh, they cannot travel as quickly or as uh, i guess dynamically across the battlefield whether it by our roads etc uh, and they're slowly becoming i wouldn't say obsolete but less versatile and less appealing to militaries around the world now, the Archer that the US military has been testing um, has fired around 450 rounds, including six 12-round bursts, and up to as many as eight rounds per minute. That is pretty impressive for a 155mm platform. And during various testing in different conditions at the Yuma Proving Ground in Yuma, Arizona, over the summer evaluation, the US military really liked it. The shoot-off actually included charge capabilities uh, with army rounds, uh, US Marine Corps helping as well, sort of getting involved. I'm not too sure how invested they were with it, but it was really sort of the army show. Uh, they identified a lot of different requirements they needed from it, uh, looked at some of the digital fire controls and obviously maintenance, because you know it's not exactly sexy talking about maintenance, but when you're buying a new program or about to select a new program, maintenance does come in there. And the US military did state that they're quite confident that the Archer does meet the needs for the new wheeled artillery system that they're looking for the unprecedented shoot and scoot capability that is really being defined for the US Army. They really want something that is very good at avoiding counterfire, which, yes, of course, the Paladin, the M109, very much respected self-propelled gun in the tracked world can do that but as i said once you put the m109 uh in a capability where it needs to cross country for a long long time it cannot compete with the archer i mean once an archer hits a road it's gone uh whereas you know m109s that they're, they're a big beast the paladin a2 versions they're a lot of weight uh, and the ammunition that comes with them too you've got to get all that stuff on track and it's just not it's not versatile enough for what they need um the vice president mark signorelli uh the business development of bae actually quoted that we look forward to additional opportunities to demonstrate the full breadth of archer's capability to the army what that looks like i'm not too sure i mean it looks like with 450 rounds downrange uh you can safely say they've got a good understanding of what archer can do um and archer really is providing that fast capability of shoot and scoot it can initiate fire within 30 seconds of receiving an order and depart in the same amount of time that's that's fast folks 30 seconds to put a fire mission down range considering the m777 takes a significant amount of time now i'm you know i'm a field gunner myself and part of the field artillery huge respect for uh, for our howitzers but you have to be clear when it's 
in the modern day battle, as I said before, counter battery is huge. Uh, we don't have the luxury like we did in Afghanistan of setting up gun positions, lobbing down rounds down range in fobs. Uh, now we have the potential, if everything you know did kick off, uh, that people are going to lob them back at us, you know, within a 30 kilometer radius potentially. And with some of the projectiles available today, like Excalibur, etc., um, it's game changing. And an archer is going to be able to release those kind of rounds as well. An archer is in service with the Swedish army. They have a lot of credibility to it. In fact, so much so that the uh, Swedish army actually sent an archer to the United States to play around with and show off. I can safely say that's going to be some form of political or military instigation there. It's not just, hey, we're the Swedish army, you want to come play? Um, I've got some feelings that the big brass up top have basically said, hey, we want to see more of the archer from a military that's actually using it and get a little bit of a third party opinion here instead of straight from BAE's mouth. Uh, and I think that's fantastic. I think that's something that needs to happen more around the world. Um, and, you know, in Sweden, it's cold. It's very cold. So they've tested that vehicle to its extreme in, in the Swedish military. What it's like in hot conditions, hard to say, but it can be reaching, you know, really, really cold temperatures in Arizona as well as really hot. So they did test them really cold at night and really hot in the day, which is impressive because when it comes to temperatures working with artillery, uh, that can affect projectiles pretty heavily when you're actually uh, starting to fire. And soldiers can operate and fire archer while remaining inside the armored cabin, which it's fully automated and, and the loading system as well. So you're reducing the number of crew members that are needing to initiate and to fire this equipment, which once again is game changing compared to the beautiful M777. As much as I love it, uh, it's just can't keep up with the archer. The magazine on the vehicle carries 20 run one rounds and can fire pretty much all of them in about three minutes. And, you know, you could closely fire that many rounds from an M777 too, but with a crew of seven to eight, uh, probably breathing out their backside, trying to keep up with putting rounds into that beast, uh, and a lot of logistics and infrastructure to setting the gun up, uh, whether it be recording, setting up, uh, you know, the firing point, uh, laying in the guns, etc., etc. So it takes a lot of time. And, you know, Archer can fire the precision bonus anti-armor munition up to 35 kilometers, whereas conventional munitions can also be fired up to 40 kilometers. Um, that's impressive. Of course, Excalibur's 50 kilometer range is, is the pinnacle of, of fire support, and this weapon system can do that. And of course, uh, when you have a system that can shoot and move very quickly and fire ranges up to that, you're making a bubble of artillery coverage that is absolutely massive. Uh, and, you know, Bonus and Excalibur are currently being used in the US Army's inventory, so it's going to be a very easy logistical transfer to put them into the Archer system. Um, they did uh, also put Archer on display at the BAE Systems booth during the Association of the United States Army Exhibition in Washington uh, of October this year, and I'm sure it raised a few uh, eyebrows as to looking at this beautiful wheel vehicle, but maybe some of the old old, uh, you know, old brass of the artillery world using the old paladin and field guns. Maybe like, what is this disgusting, uh, weird looking monstrosity? I don't want anything to do with it. But I, uh, I am excited to see if the US Army does select it. And I personally think they're going to. It's just a matter of when they're actually going to pull the lanyard on it. Um, I appreciate you stopping by on today's video. Please uh, feel free to leave me a like. And if you did enjoy the video uh, and want to see more, please uh, make sure you hit the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of content in the future. I also want to thank personally everyone who has been supporting me on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, I really do appreciate you. I don't thank you guys enough. Um, I really, really thank you from the bottom of everything that I do in this channel uh, in your support in doing so. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, if you do want to support me, you can go check out the description box below for those links, uh, including my social media. And I hope you all have a wonderful, safe day. All the best. Bye-bye.